Okay, so now let's look at the fifth and sixth channels on this mixer, which rather confusingly are labeled 5, 6, and 7, 8. The reason for this is that they are what I call hybrid channels, which can function as either mono or stereo channels, depending on your requirements. This gives the mixer more flexibility, allowing you to connect more mics or instruments depending on what you have. Where these channels differ from the first four is mainly in the input connector section, so let's take a look. Each channel can accept a single XLR or two quarter-inch connectors. The quarter-inch inputs override the XLR input. They cannot be used at the same time. Some notes about these quarter-inch connectors. They are unbalanced, unlike the combo connector on channels 1 to 4. In other words, if you plug in a balanced TRS plug, such as this one, the ring connector will be grounded. If you need a balanced connection to these channels, use the XLR connector. If only the left connector on these channels is used, the signal is routed in mono. In other words, it is sent to both left and right outputs, and the pan control can be used to vary its position in the stereo field. Right now, we're going to demonstrate this. We are going to use this cable. As you can see, it's a mini jack or 3.5 millimeter to two quarter inch unbalanced. And we are going to play some royalty free music from our laptop. So normally you would connect left and right in this fashion. To begin with, we're only going to connect the left connector so that I can demonstrate the L mono effect to you. All right, so music is playing. As always, we will press PFL, raise the gain until it's around zero. There we are. And then we can switch the channel on and bring the gain up. Now, in this case, because we are routing in mono, this acts as a pan control. So I can pan the signal to the left and I can pan the signal to the right. This would apply whether this were an instrument or um, in this case, music. Now, if I then connect the second connector, we are now routing in stereo. The left side of this is being routed to the left output and the right is being routed to the right output. This now functions as a balance control. Let's check our PFL, bring up the fader. You can hear that the music is now in stereo. Demonstrate our balance. If you use only the right connector, what will happen is that it will still be routed in stereo, but only to the right output. Have a listen. And in this case, this still works like a balance control. I can't think of a situation where you would want to do that. What this means is that if for any reason you need to convert a stereo signal like this to mono or to have control over both sides of the signal independently, you must use two channels. Now note carefully, on both of these channels, I'm connected to the left mono connector, effectively converting this to dual mono and giving me full control over the stereo spread using the pan controls here, right? So 
Let's play our track once again. And to begin with, let me set the gain the same. We'll turn our channels on, bring them up. So what's happening now is that we are routing the signal. You notice it's quite a bit louder because there's two channels of it. We're now routing in dual mono. If you wanted this to be stereo, you'd pan the left channel hard left and the right channel hard right. This is exactly the same effect as connecting these two to one channel using the left and right connectors. The only difference is that this gives you control over the stereo spread, right? Maybe you don't want such a wide spread. Listen to the difference. Mono. Some stereo. Full stereo. So it's very important to understand how the brake contacts within these work and how it affects your signal routing. Finally, the gain range available is different for the quarter inch connectors versus the XLR connector. Once again, this is shown in white around the gain knob. The white on black numbers are the gain range for the XLR connector. The black on white numbers are the gain range for the quarter inch inputs. Note that connecting to the quarter inch inputs on channels 5, 6 and 7, 8 gives you exactly the same amount of gain as connecting to the quarter inch input section on the combo connector on channels 1 to 4 with the pad switch engaged. This makes sense and it's good to see that Yamaha is consistent with their gain structure across channels. There is also a high pass filter on these two channels which affects the XLR inputs only. Alright, now let's move on to the last pair of channels 910 and 1112. As the numbering and the lack of an XLR input suggests, these are stereo only channels and they're equipped with one pair of unbalanced quarter inch inputs and one pair of RCA connectors each. As before, the quarter inch connectors override the RCA inputs. They cannot be used at the same time. It is important to note that there is no left mono feature on these two channels. Note the difference in the labeling. Connecting to the left input will only send that signal to the left output. Let's demonstrate. We have our same connector here. Connecting to the left channel, start our music. Channel on, beta up. Now again, there's no gain here. Again, if I now connect the second connector here, you can hear we've now got full stereo and the balance works as a balance knob. Now, if you wanted to use two faders on one stereo signal on this pair of channels, you would need to connect the right signal to the right input on channel 12. Let's hear what that sounds like. Now, very important, in this case, the balance controls have no effect. Listen. I can't think of a time where you would want to do this unless for some reason you had an imbalance between the left and right channels and you needed to use the faders rather than the balance control. Uh, these, signal, these channels here do not allow mono routing of uh, mono signals. So if you wanted to do that, you'd need to use 5, 6, and 7, 8. You'll notice that there is no gain knob. Gain on these channels is fixed at minus 10 dBU. So they are really best suited for consumer line level devices such as CD players, laptops, iPads, etc. 
When connecting such devices, I recommend starting with device volume at a 100% and then adjusting the device volume downwards if necessary. In addition, we have a simplified two-band EQ with only high and low shelving filters. Finally, it's important to note that channel 1112 features a line USB switch that allows you to select between the analog inputs here and the USB input on the back of the mixer. We'll cover this input when we discuss the master section. So that concludes our survey of the three different types of input channels, mono, mono stereo hybrid, and stereo. If you'd like more information on the technical characteristics of these inputs, Yamaha produced a very comprehensive technical specifications document listing things like nominal input levels and max levels before clip. Now let's move on to the master or output section. First, you have main stereo outputs on both XLR and balanced quarter inch. In this case, the quarter inch connectors are going to my recorder. These are typically connected to power amplifiers or active speakers in a live sound context or the input of a recorder, as in this case. You can use both sets of main outputs at the same time. To the left of these, you have the aux outputs on balance quarter inch. The master control for these outputs is just below the internal effects section. Remember that the same set of knobs is used to send signal to both aux 2 as well as to the internal effects section. Both of these functions can be used at the same time. However, the aux 2 master controls only the signal being sent to this output. It does not control the overall level of signal going to the internal effects unit. Yamaha have been quite helpful color coding to make this clear. As you can see, the AUX2 master is blue, whereas everything to do with the effects section is white. Next to the AUX outputs are the physical outputs for groups 1 and 2. The master level control for these is the group 1, 2 fader. Note that these outputs are active whenever signal is being routed to the group 1-2 fader by the 1-2 routing options, whether or not the group 1-2 signal is being routed to the main stereo outputs. You can thus use these outputs regardless of the position of the red ST button next to the group fader. Below the group outputs, you have a pair of monitor outs on balanced quarter inch. Please note, these are designed to be connected to a pair of studio monitors when the mixer is used for recording, not stage monitors. The master level control and source switch for these outputs is located above the master fader adjacent to the headphone level control. Next to these outputs, you have a foot switch connector which is used to switch the effects on and off. It's the same as pressing the on-off button on the FX return fader. This is, meant to, uh, this is meant for when the mixer is located on stage and a performer needs to quickly switch the effects on and off, for example, when speaking to the audience in between songs. Finally, you have the headphone output on a stereo quarter-inch connector the master level control and source switch for these is located just below the meters. You can choose to listen to the stereo output of the mixer or the group output depending on what your requirements are. We'll close this tutorial by briefly going over the USB interface. As you can see, it uses a type B connector, so you will need a cable like this, a type a to type B USB connector to connect to it. This is the same connector that is used to connect most printers. Note that USB drives cannot be attached directly to the mixer. 
Some important characteristics of this interface. It is stereo bidirectional. This means that it is two channels of audio in each direction to and from the mixer. The output signal from the mixer to the computer is a copy of the left-right main output, pre-master fader. In other words, the level is not affected by the level of this master fader. This output can be routed to your DAW or recording software, but note that you can only record the main left-right bus, not individual channels or stems as they would be called. The input signal from computer to mixer is the audio output of your computer. This can be configured in different ways depending on your exact setup, but at its simplest, it is a copy of what you would hear through the computer speakers or headphone output. This signal appears on channel 1112, it's labeled there USB in, and the line USB switch here must be in the down USB position in order to hear it. Finally, this USB connection is USB Audio 2.0 class compliant. What this means is that generally no drivers are required for most Windows PCs. The situation on Mac may differ slightly. If a driver is required, it can be downloaded from Yamaha.com. This interface is useful for making basic stereo recordings of your mix, as well as for playing backing tracks, break music, etc. Note that there is a possibility of a feedback loop being formed between channel 1112 and the computer whenever the ST routing switch on channel 11 and 12 is engaged. For this reason, it's a good idea not to record and play back from your computer at the same time. We'll now demonstrate the USB interface. So, to briefly demonstrate how you would connect the USB interface to a laptop, you can see that I have here, this is the connector that's coming from the mixer, and I would simply connect it to my laptop. Now, in the case of this laptop, I get a brief indication that the laptop has detected a secondary connection. Now, the important thing is if we look down at this corner here, you need to check by clicking on your speaker icon. If you can see there, it says Line MGXU. Now, what that means is that the mixer and the laptop have detected one another and they are communicating with each other. In some cases, you may need to manually select this from this list. As you can see, I have the option of my internal speakers or headphones or the MG. On most laptops, this configuration happens automatically as soon as you plug in the mixer. If I unplug the mixer, you can see that that goes away. Plug the mixer in and it changes to MGXU and the option box comes back. So now that we've got the USB cable hooked up and we have the laptop and mixer speaking to one another, the routing process is very simple. You start your music playing on your laptop. Ensure that this USB switch is in the down position. You can then PFL to check. Now you notice that the level is very high. So what I'll do is I'll turn the level on my laptop down. There's no a physical gain control here and then we can turn the channel on now if you have a situation where you're dealing with a USB device that has no physical volume knob there is a digital attenuator located within the mixer that can be used in order to display this, you press this knob five times. One, two, three, four, five. There's your attenuator. 
and you can use it, as you can see, it goes to minus 24. And it's effectively a digital pad. This can be very useful in cases where the source is out of reach or for some reason does not have a volume control. So everyone, that concludes our tutorial on the Yamaha MG12 XU Mixer. I hope that this has been useful. Please leave questions and comments below. I look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.